everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another podcast. I'm so pleased to have on today's show, Andy Arnold. He's the president and chief revenue officer of Ansira, and we had a great time spending time with the dealers in the Napa Valley at DMSC, and I'm glad to have Andy back. Andy, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian. Really glad to be here. Appreciate it. You know, before we jump into some of the things I want to hit, that was the first time you were out to one of our conferences, the Digital Marketing Strategies Conference next year. We're moving it to Austin. What what was some takeaways that you got from the type of conferences that we run? Well, first of all, I didn't realize Austin was official. Congratulations for selecting. I know you did your poll, so glad to hear it. What a great location. Oh, yeah. Um, We've gotten a lot of great feedback. I'm bad. Uh, That's a great city. It'll be fun for everyone. No, you know, we've um, certainly folks from our team have been at your events before, and I hadn't had the pleasure. And I was just really excited. One, at the intimacy I felt that people came and were really, really focused. They were very present, which I think is important, the intimacy, and then the openness to just have a nice dialogue and be transparent with one another. So I loved, you know, the collaborative nature of it. I thought that was wonderful. The real relevant topics I thought were really hard hitting. And, you know, there was some real idea sharing. And I walked away certainly learning a few things and it inspired me to do some different follow-ups on our end. And then just to hear from everybody firsthand how they're, taking some of these um, emerging things, you know, like GA4 and, you know, all these things that are present, EV and and how they're acting in the marketplace. So that was certainly really exciting to hear firsthand from the dealers. And that intimacy was great. So really nice job. Loved being there. Thank you so much. And I know that the members of the CXO Summit the day before the conference enjoyed your presence. And uh, you mentioned GA4, and I'm really glad that... Synchro and Sierra is part of the Automotive Standards Council for GA4. So Andy, let's move to a topic of question that I often get. Dealers are asking me, hey, what's going on with Synchro? In 2020, And Sierra acquired the CDK Digital Marketing Division, has since really been, uh, from what I can tell, a synergistic relationship. So what are some of the benefits of the combination of Ansira and Synchro when it comes to website and advertising customers, those dealers who are still with the brand? Yeah, no, great. Thanks for asking. Um, we were super excited to carve out CDK Digital. Really interesting business, a great footprint among automotive dealers. And, you know, you hit on the word synergy. I'm sure we'll expand on that later, but at the end of the day, it was just a super good fit for us. And I think pulling them out and carving them out of a much larger public organization really gave us the opportunity to lean into this great organization and focus on the things that we've been wanting, that organization has been wanting to focus on for a long time. You know, they're not beholden to being part of a public company anymore. And Sierra is privately held, which gives us a lot of freedom to take a look at the business listen to our constituents, um, our active clients and prospective clients, and really identify the things that we want to lean into. So for example, since we've um, done the acquisition, we've really focused on improved client onboarding. We had heard under the CDK umbrella that that was rough. And so how can we dissect that, look at each of the pieces, do a lot of surveys. And so we have really truncated the client onboarding process and made that incredibly smooth. And people are really, really excited with where that is now. A big part of that was we've done named people in our support model. So we're incredibly high touch. And then the other big component out there in the marketplace, obviously, is accelerated investment in the tech, right? And so I think we have really leading tech for dealers today. But we were able to really lean in and and give more dollars to the tech investment and the roadmap. And we've done great things like put virtual inventory and transit functionality in place. Ability to clone pages so that if you're a dealer with multiple websites, you can clone a page and send that page to your other website. And it automatically puts it itself into the website and shows you the points you have to modify. But it, it, it puts it there immediately for you, which is great. We've really focused on an unparalleled speed to create and manage a page because folks want to be able to do DIY. They want to get in, they want to get out. 
And so we've really accelerated the ability to do that. We've given a lot more functionality within the homepage layout and design. And then, you know, the entire site is ADA built into the platform. And so not only did we focus on ADA, but we've included litigation support. And then we're proud to be the only company out there right now that has not lost an ADA compliance suit. So those are things that are kind of top of mind for dealers that we had heard were things that they wanted former CDK Digital focus on. And so we were really pleased that once we were able to close on the acquisition, we were able to you know, unlock some of those things and accelerate those roadmap items and then tap into the expertise that Ansir has of the entire ecosystem through our relationships with automotive OEMs. So we've seen a lot of the things on the horizon. So it really is a better together mentality. And we're just delighted with the acquisition. That's been a great marriage for the lack of a better term. Yeah. And Andy, I am going to get back to that better together because I think there's some things that dealers don't know that I'd like to unlock in our interview today. But let me go back to two things that you said. ADA compliance. I think that dealers have been lulled into a little sleep about this and uh, the risks they run. So that's fantastic that you've included not only the native ADA support, so you don't have to buy a third-party tool, which is what most dealers are doing, and also the litigation support. The second thing is the support for dealer groups. And when we were talking to dealers at the Automotive CXO Summit, I'm not sure if all the dealers understood that your CMS is really built for group optimization. And so for the dealers who are in a growing group and you're seeing the support cost of updating dozens of websites or the lack of content because of the cost to create, publish, and syndicate content, I would really encourage you to get an updated demo of that because, right, Andy, I mean, the dealer groups really love that feature. No, they really do. And it, it, you've really hit the nail on the head. It has really simplified for the end user the ability to optimize across a group network, whether that's, you know, seven dealerships or 50. And so it really, we put the power into the dealership's hands and have made that incredibly easy from the cloning features to our on-demand creative, whatever it really takes to make sure that you're able to optimize across all the sites. And it's been, it's been great. Yes. And I, and I want to just recall a couple of statements I made at DMSC dealers need to be developing their EV content strategy now and uh, tools like that uh, we are talking about here. Content syndication for groups makes Synchro's website platform quite unique. So I want to jump into this better together. I wasn't aware until you and I sat down at NADA just how sophisticated Synchro's ad tech is outside of automotive. Most dealers think of Synchro in your role as a compliance uh, service to OEMs and to ensure brand compliance. But what I learned, and I want the dealers listening today to learn, is that you have a digital marketing stack, a tech stack that supports other franchise networks with the most advanced ad tech on the planet. So uh, when people say, well, why did Ansira buy CDK Digital's assets? It's because it fit perfectly in a tech stack optimized for franchise locations spread around the United States. Andy, would you really talk a little bit about that, what your platform and ad tech solutions that have been built over the years and competitive over the years, why is that a good fit right now for dealers? Yeah, no, great, great call out. And, you know, look, I think it's, you just have to kind of address the elephant in the room, right? Folks who knew Amsira primarily in the automotive space at a dealer level probably knew us for co-op and compliance management. And that is certainly something we do well on behalf of the OEMs. And, you know, that is certainly something that maybe dealerships have encountered us with. However, (laughs) the experience that Ansir has in the marketing technology realm and delivering on high touch marketing services to businesses across industries is incredibly expansive. Bringing these two companies together, Synchro and Ansir, has been such a positive thing for our customers, right? The main thing that connects both organizations, these legacy organizations, is we deliver marketing services 
in distributed ecosystems. And what I mean by that is an OEM, right? Take a Ford, they sell through their dealership partners, right? So does American Family Insurance, who's a client of ours, through their brokers and agents. And the same thing with Panera through their franchise restaurants. So everybody that Encira works with is in a distributed ecosystem. And we empower those companies to accelerate a more connected marketplace. Yeah. And so, Andy, let's talk about that. Specifically, in this experience you have with distributed networks, what specific examples, products, or services do you think are a perfect fit as this new marriage brings tech from the outside into automotive, a space that you're well-versed in? Yeah, you know, really just that end-to-end customer journey. So we help so many brands with their data and how's their data, whether that's putting setting up a CDP, for example, and understanding who their customers are all the way through how do you find those best customers with performance media that's best in class through our ad tech to then converting those folks on an individual door website. And then ultimately, how do you retain and keep those best customers through our integrated loyalty solutions? So all of those things are different steps that Ansira and now with Synchro really cover that end-to-end customer journey. And I think the legacy Synchro solution may have been websites and great ad tech in the marketplace, but now we're bringing that strategic integrated loyalty perspective and really helping folks understand how a customer journey is and how hard it is to, you know, land that original customer, keep them, retain them and have them come back for more. So it's really been a great marriage from that perspective. Andy, this story really falls in line with some of my recent writings, which I've been writing about the, maybe the challenge of the existing franchise dealer network and the changes that could come. And I've been encouraging dealers. I was just out in LA for two days. And here's what I told them. This is the time where you have to be obsessed with the customer experience. You need to double down on your retention and loyalty efforts and focus. And what it seems like to me for midsize and larger dealer groups who realize the power of their customer base, understand the changes in the retail framework, you may be uniquely positioned to help them deliver a more personalized, relevant customer experience like you're doing for other brands. Am I reading that right? You are reading that right. And we have just such a deep expertise across vertical, across verticals, which I think makes us unique because so many of these problems about personalization, finding and keeping your best customers, making that experience feel really personalized and high touch. Every single brand across America experiences that. You know, whether you're in restaurants, insurance, QSR, it doesn't matter. It is really ultimately that same North Star that everybody's chasing to really make that customer experience incredible. And I think our diverse background lets us bring best practices outside of auto to really round out with our automotive expertise. I mean, we're in the mid 60% with auto as clients, right? So we have a deep rooted automotive expertise, but it's that other 40 or so percent, if you will, that really makes us unique because we're bringing a lot of solutions to the table that we've experienced outside of automotive that I think really um, become hard hitting for a dealer because it's something they haven't heard before, or it's a unique or proposition. And I'm just going to be honest with, you know, our listeners, listen, I have lots of friends who are in the automotive tech and marketing space. Of course, that's where I've cut my teeth for the last 17 years, but I've never heard a dealer rave about their customer retention and life cycle marketing partner. And so this could be a very timely interview, Andy, as dealer groups listening to today's interview could reach out and say, hold on, Annie, what are you guys doing differently? And in fact, isn't it true that you power some of the OEM programs that exist today that maybe dealers wouldn't even know that you were behind the scenes powering those solutions with your tech? Yeah. I mean, there's so many different solutions out there that dealers are probably touching that didn't even realize it was us whether that some of the in-market programs that we're doing for Lincoln, for example, by visiting dealerships and seeing if they're ready for the Lincoln Commitment Program, or going out in market doing digital consulting for our Nissan partner. There's just a multitude. We've helped with car launches, 
experiential consumer events that have drawn, driven engagement, the enthusiast events for all of the Subaru brands. So just a lot of different ways in which we're testing, touching customers so far beyond how I think people see us today. So we're, you know, we're behind a lot of the, the curtains out there if you will. And so it's been really exciting. We're deeply rooted in the automotive space. And again, uh, as we look at the digital retailing space, Annie, more and more of the midsize and larger dealer groups are starting to brand their retail experience, whether it's Lithia's driveway or uh, Asbury's uh, click lane. And for the dealer groups that are listening today who might be thinking, hey, we need to brand our retail experience. We need to connect with our customers and, and further clarify our value proposition. These are not projects typically for the local uh, co-op advertising PPC SEO company. This is uh, a job for agency partners that understand automotive and understand customer targeting, relevancy, timing, cadence, personalization. And so I, I want to throw that in there that there are a few people who have the perspective that Ansira has. And so we should be thinking about that. And, and, and so that brings up the next question. Um, how good is Ansira's solutions? Now, recently you've... Uh, received some third-party recognition uh, in the industry for your tech solutions and services. Can you give us a little uh, highlight reel on what are some of those accolades? Because again, I think dealers might see you as, oh, that's the company who bought CDK. I don't know why. Or, hey, those are the compliance police. Um, <laughs> but really, you are a full stack ad tech for franchise models. So let's talk about some outside industry recognition. Yeah, look, you know, we really respect what Forrester Marketing is doing out there and they're really an interesting juggernaut, right? And they come in and they do a series of steps into how they evaluate folks out in the marketplace. And the first step is they, you know, pull a list together and um, it, you know, it's considered like a now tech and it's like, here are just the players out in the marketplace, let people kind of know about it. But then they peel back the onion and they start refining and they do what they call a wave and a wave you have to be invited to. And what it is, is that they've narrowed the field of who's supplying um, services out in the marketplace. And then they invite you to this wave and has a series of questions. You do um, deep, you know, proprietary information sharing with Forrester. You do a presentation. Um, you have to show case studies, they do client accolades, you've got to go out and give them clients to interview. So it's incredibly, incredibly thorough. And so we've been just blessed that we've had some back to back recognition in the through channel marketing automation wave as a leader. We've been a strong performer in the loyalty services wave last, last year, strong performer in the channel incentives management wave. Um, Monday, we're going to be recognized as a strong performer in the customer data strategy and activation services wave. So we've just been in several, several places um, throughout Forrester, and it's really kind of cross the, the offering, right? It's not just a one-trick pony, which again, I think makes us unique because we're so well-rounded in the space and then recognized as such. And then, you know, G2 looks at tech out in the marketplace, and this is a place where a lot of clients go on and refer you. So if you aren't highly referred, then you can't get a high ranking with G2. So we're really pleased that we're up there on the G2 space about clients that are using our tech. Again, that's completely review generated for the lack of a better term. Obviously the AW um, A awards, Brian, thank you. We've sure. been recognized with websites, Grace, which is our um, uh, reporting offering. And that's really ready for the Google ecosystem change with GA4. We're excited about that. Colleen Harris is what we call our Google whisper. And you recognize her as a dynamic pre presenter. So really the AWA awards is yet another one that we've been there. And then, you know, beyond third party endorsement, endorsement, something that's important to us is thought leadership, right? So I think that dealerships have so many choices out there. Um, that, but once you sign up, are you considered to set it and forget it? Or do you have access to unlock different things, right? From dealer events so that we can show trends, insights, and support. We were just in Dallas last week, in fact, and invited our customers to come to the, uh, you know, a hotel ballroom. And we presented our position on GA4 and what's coming and served, you know, drinks and, you know, snacks. And I, no dealer needs drinks and snacks, but at the end of the day, it's about thought leadership and being around other dealerships. And we're doing those in-market events 
as a way to really show our commitment to the dealer ecosystem and our, our, our commitment to thought leadership, right? Beyond that, we do monthly webinars and other industry events. So we're just, you know, from a third party and in-market standpoint, we really try to be as many places as we can and really commit it to, you know, advancing the conversation. Right. And for the dealer groups that are looking for a strategic partner to set up their own customer data platform with their own cadence and culture, with that outside recognition and and loyalty and data management, again, there's going to be a few companies that do that, but how many of them with deep automotive space? So the, the, the field gets narrowed really, really quickly. I think dealers know that if anything is changing rapidly is the advertising space. When we think of loyalty programs, when we think of large dealer groups branding themselves in the marketplace, obviously tech fires those marketing plans, but there's been so much confusion about going cookie lists and using first party data. What are you telling your customers about your preparation for a cookie future? And do we already have some insights that direct API and data sharing is, is really filling the gap and maybe even given better targeting solutions than the former, I would say, passive cookie? You know, we have actually a white paper out there on our website. It's called Preparing for the Cookie List Future. So I encourage any of the listeners to please go on to NCR.com and you're welcome to download it. But just a couple of things to answer your question specifically. We look at this as a real opportunity to connect with your customers, right? Instead of being intimidated by the cookie list future, this is really an opportunity and you should seize it. And that all starts with what we, you know, what the industry is calling zero party data. So I think everyone's really familiar with first party data, right? Your sales data and whatnot that you have in house, but zero party data is data that your customers have actually given you of often comes into the shape of like a preference center, but they've actually allowed you to know more about them. And so we really encourage folks to lean into that zero party data right now as we're preparing for the cookie list future and asking your customers not only to opt in, but it goes deeper than that, to give you the information that you're gonna act on to do personalization. So as you prepare for the cookie list future, now is the time to make sure you're set up on all your touch points to really collect the data that you want and that folks can opt in. You're not going to be able to leverage, obviously, the data that you have if folks haven't opted in and given you the permission to do that. So really figuring out the best way for your organization to ask for it and really prepare in that way is something that we're really helping a lot of clients from, you know, across the spectrum of verticals do right now. And there's a lot of unique unique ways that you can do that, whether that's little pop-ups along their journey, whether that's emails or polls or whatever the case may be along the way, you can have people really tell you more about themselves and pull back that layer and start to store and really understand who your customer is. And then they've given you the permission along the way to do that versus relying on the data sources that you may have today that are dated and that you're really not doing great data hygiene and cleansing, which you have to be prepared for before we go to this cookie world. Our ad tech also has been modified to react in this environment. And so we're prepared for a cookie list future. So we're not going to need your cookie to be as successful from a conversion standpoint. That's been a long road coming and you'll hear more about that in our white paper that's available. Great. I encourage uh, our listeners to go to ensure.com and download that because here's the truth. There's a lot of conflicting messages. All of a sudden, the buzzword is first party data. Everyone's saying they have first party data, but in, in many cases, their first party data is just a compilation or a data soup of other third party So you have to be really careful on who your tech partners are, the source of the data. And then if you're going to trust partners with your first party data, you have to make sure that their data hygiene is not putting your data at risk, meaning control of who has access. And that if they're doing data hygiene with updates, that the auditing process can always be reversed because I've seen too many horror stories about that. As we wind down our time together today, and it's gone way, way too fast. Let's step back for a minute. You work with OEMs and dealers successfully, and you see a lot of needs um, on both sides. 
We see some movement for direct-to-consumer sales or ordering that's, that is here and uh, possible more of that consumer direct model. And I think it's driven by everyone's thought that, hey, it should be faster, easy, or mostly online to order your next car. And I understand that. But you know, what do you see as the biggest challenges in both your dealers and OEMs? Is there any commonalities that uh, you see from your perch with working with so many great companies? You know, obviously this transition from ICE vehicles to EV has everybody kind of rethinking their business model, right? And what that means, and you know, from my perspective, it kind of reminds me, bear with me, of kind of when Uber came on the scene versus taxis. Right, so what, right. What, what did Uber really solve? An Uber promises they're going to take a credit card, which a lot of taxis would never do. It promised that that car's going to wait for Brian Pash outside. And so if you got hung up saying your goodbyes at a party, you know that Uber's out there waiting for you, right? And you can see it on your mobile. And a cab, somebody could jump in and steal your cab, and it was complicated. And so for so long, people have been fighting the cabs, right? The cabs have been fighting the Ubers, and that's been like the fight versus just asking the fundamental question, what are they solving? And can a taxi cab do the same thing? So some cities you've probably gone to, you'll see a taxi cab has an app now that does similar things, but it's like, like, what is the problem that the customers, you know, was being solved for the customer? And I think that's kind of where we are with EVs. I think that people are frustrated with Tesla. I get it. But at the same token, Tesla has some things or some gaps that I think that the dealership ecosystem can fill that Tesla's never going to be able to fill unless they go to a dealership model. For example, you go to a Tesla dealership and you have your car service. They don't charge it. They don't wash it. There's not a dealer there that's trying to make a connection because there's not, you know, there's the one Tesla provider. So I think that right now, as we're looking at this EV conversion, not only will a lot of that be done online in that ordering, but there's a real space for dealers from the perspective of delivery, making sure that everyone knows how to use the car correctly. They'll come back hopefully and charge at a dealership if you have a charging station. And you're going to end up having a whole new relationship with your customer that you may not have had before. And I will tell you, it'll be much richer than the relationship a Tesla owner has with their Tesla center, because it's not a dealer making that happen. That's a stress for OEMs and dealers right now. And I think looking at EV and understanding how you can solve that customer fear of, will my charge run out? What questions do I have? Where can I charge it? All these things and really be that trusted voice and then add that personalization and having that differentiating customer experience. I think that's how you're going to win versus kind of fighting this new EV model that may start online, there's always going to be a place for a dealer because you've got to be able to collect that car somewhere. And there's an opportunity to step up that EV relationship. So we have a lot of EV readiness programs that we're working with our OEMs for. That's another place that maybe dealers have interfaced with us. And it's really exciting to see some of the unique things some of the manufacturers are doing. I think this is the opportunity for dealers to kind of do some self-reflection and say, how can I really differentiate as this transformation is coming? Well, that aligns with exactly what I've been writing about. It's like, look, let's work together on this. Uh, understand that the franchise dealer experience has wide ranges. The, you know, the <laughs> curve has some extremes on both sides. And I can understand the national brand wanting to have a more consistent brand experience. At the same time, as you mentioned, the local dealer is traditionally the person that uh, consumers come to as a local expert to help with their mobility needs, finding the right vehicle, helping get finance. And so um, the, the rhetoric that the dealer model is going away and consumers want to buy 100% of the cars online is obviously one extreme. And the other extreme is, look, we don't need to change because we're making money and we've been doing this for 50 years. So there has to be a middle ground. And I'm glad that you're in the middle of the effort to help dealers and OEMs educate consumers on EVs and what the future sales process looks like. Change is here for all our listeners. Uh, <laughs> the reason why uh, I've been more vocal of late is because not many people can speak up about the real issues that need to be addressed. But Andy, one thing that I enjoyed is from your conversations with me and how you've talked to dealers, you just lay it out, tell it like it is, and you're speaking from a position of knowledge. So 
I really love the relationship that we're developing as I understand where NCIR is going, how you are supporting Synchro to really bring best of breed solutions to market. And then, and more importantly, how you're helping dealer groups win the long game. Let me close today's interview with one question for the dealer groups out there that have listened to your story that NCIR is just not compliance, but a true data specialist in handling consumer data, customer data, lifecycle marketing, loyalty and retention efforts. What is one thing that you'd like to say to that marketing manager or COO or CMO of a larger dealer group that they they might not have thought about? What is one way that you really can help them achieve their business goals in, in the year ahead? I think twofold. I think that as you're looking at the right partner for your digital marketing needs at a, at a dealership or group level, as well as your websites, I'd love the, the courtesy of another look because I think we've invested a lot since people knew us as CDK Digital. And I think you're going to be really pleasantly surprised with the changes that we've made. We've listened to incredible customer feedback. The tech is in incredible shape the teams in place that's doing great work from a customer service and support standpoint. And that is, you know, certainly fundamental, but beyond that, as this Ancero Synchro or these organizations have come together, I think you're going to be really impressed with our lens that we look at the automotive space through and how to really find and keep your best customers and really drive loyalty for you at the dealership. And I think as groups continue to buy other organizations and the model of purchase is changing, folks, if I'm a dealer, I'm sh- I would be really concerned about how do I ensure that I'm going to be keeping my best customers out there. And I think there's nobody more suited than Ansira to help you with that. So that's how I would leave the conversation. Oh, we'd love an opportunity to talk to you. Great. And then, so you have two resources for the dealers who are listening. You have uh, synchrodigital.com and of course, ansira.com, two places where you can connect with the teams. And as uh, Andy said, give a fresh look at the partnership opportunities you could have with their ad tech and infrastructure. And of course, more importantly, their enhanced services that you may have never known about. This podcast is one of many with automotive leaders, disruptors, and innovators. And if you haven't been following our podcast, please take a look at the Brian Pash podcast. You can go to your Apple podcast channel, Google Play, or at Libsyn, and you can go to brianpash.libsyn.com to see all our episodes. I want to remind our dealers also about two other important initiatives. One is the Automotive Standards Council for GA4. We are setting the standards for automotive website companies, digital retailing, chat, messaging, merchandising companies. We have over 50 companies now on the council. And during these summer months, we are going to be publishing initial drafts of the specification and then releasing that at the Modern Retailing Conference. That's November 13th, 14th, and 15th in the beautiful Palm Beach downtown area, right by the water. We're really excited to be back in Palm Beach. And of course, in Sarah Synchro, we'll be at the conference as well. So mark your calendars, get your tickets early, especially dealers, if you want an edge on getting your dealership's data ready for GA4 making sure your vendors are supporting the standard that the products you use are GA4 certified. These are all important concepts that will be discussed in detail in November. So thank you for listening to today's podcast. Thank you, Andy, for your conversation. And I'll catch you again on another podcast session in the near future. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian.